Hey guys, it's Sarah and welcome to my studio. So last week I did a video on creating double-sided bookmarks using the image to keychain feature in Maker Lab and then of course printing them. And I got a comment on that video asking if I could possibly show them how to design a post-it note box. So basically a little holder that would, you know, contain post-it notes. And I thought that would be a great tutorial to do for you guys because that's a good next step up for learning CAD design. The video that I did a couple weeks ago where I was creating the door was just sort of doing the basics of how you would draw and then just extrude a shape. This one will feature not just drawing and extruding the shape, but it will also show you a little bit on the cutting pieces using the subtraction feature, as well as playing around a little bit with the circular pattern option when you're creating sketches, as well as with shapes itself to make this easier to do. So that is what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna show you guys how to model a post-it note box. Not only model a post-it note box, make it kind of fancy with the ability to change its appearance on a whim. I'm gonna show you how to do that today. So let's get started. Whenever I start a new modeling project, I usually spend some time grabbing the necessary measurements and making sketches. You could do all of this using a tablet or a PC, but I find working things out a bit on paper really helps with the process. I'll write down all of the measurements that I need, as well as any details about the model that I'm creating. I'll then do some rough drawings to work out my idea and figure out the sketches I'll need to create inside the software. Once I've settled on a design, it's time to head over to Shaper. I'll open up a new project in Shaper and tap the sketch button in the bottom plane to create a new sketch on. From there, I'll tap the rectangle tool to draw out an 80 millimeter square to create the base of my model. Then I will use the offset edge tool to draw out an edge for my model, approximately two millimeters. Then I'll tap exit sketching and work on extruding my forms to create the post-it note box. This is really easy to do. You simply tap the plane that you want to extrude and either draw up the arrow or type in the exact height that you want. In just a matter of two steps, I have a box that can hold the post-it notes and it's the exact size I need. I want to create an indent on the side so I can reach all of the notes. But to do that, I need to create a sketch on the side of the model. By tapping Add and then Construction Plane, I can place one on the front of the model. This enables me to draw right on the side of the box. Using the Spline tool, I'll draw a curve to create the indent, pressing slightly harder with my pencil to indicate an anchor points. These can also be moved manually to fine tune the line. After that, I'll close my shape with a straight line and exit my sketch. Tapping this sketch shape, I will move it through the box and Shaper automatically switches to the subtract shape function, which allows me to slice directly through the box, creating a nice divoted area. I'll smooth out the cut points by tapping the edges and pulling out to a radius of five millimeters. At this point, I could export the shape to print and it would do its job, but I want to make it a little fancy. I'm going to create some swappable panels to attach to the sides that have different patterns printed on them. I'm going to use a similar technique to create these set of new shapes. I'll tap Add and New Construction Plane again to the side, and then I'll draw the shape of the panels. These will have tabs on the side that will fit into some corner posts that I'll create later. Again, it's just a matter of tapping the sketch and pulling out the shape. But if I tap the small icon that pops up with the tool, I can change the Boolean method to new body. This creates a separate shape, which is what I want. Now I need four sides with them all positioned correctly. I'm going to use the circular pattern tool to help me with this. I'll tap the pattern and select my shape. Then I'll move the rotation axis to snap to the center of my box and pull to rotate. Now we have three sides positioned exactly where we need them. Before I continue modeling, I want to make them easier to see, so I'm going to switch their material to a different color. Jumping back into my original sketch, I'm going to add a sketch to the corners by drawing a small square. I'm also going to take a moment to move the panel pieces out slightly, 
just to allow for a little bit of breathing room. I'll hide some of my shapes and then extrude the corner. Once I've done that, I'll bring back the sides so I can create the holes for my tabs. To do this, I'm going to use the subtract function, marking the corner piece as the positive body and the sides as the negative bodies. I'll also adjust the settings to make sure I keep originals of the negative bodies. That way, my side pieces don't disappear. A quick hide reveals that the tabs have successfully been cut out of the corner pieces. Now I just need to add a little bit of a kerf to the inside by shelling it about 0.1 or so. That way we have a little bit of breathing room for the tabs when they go to be popped in. Now that I've got the corner piece set up exactly the way I want it, I'm going to duplicate it using the pattern tool. Once more, I'll click it, change the center rotation point to the center of the box, and then pull to rotate all the way around. After thinking about it, I've decided I do want a panel on the front as well. But rather than copying one of the sides and moving it into place, I'm going to go back into my history where I had patterned the sides earlier and change the number of copies from three to four, and then turning the rotation angle up so they all align correctly. All that's left for me to do is nudge the new panel into place and cut out the section that is not needed. I'll also smooth the corners with the fillet tool like I did earlier as well. Now I just want to do one final thing, which is create a sketch from my side panels so that I can set up the art files over in Affinity. I'll also take a moment to grab all of the shapes for the post-it note box and union them together. Now let's get back to creating a sketch from the sides. To do that, I'm going to move the panels off to the side and rotate them to flat. I'll line them up neatly as well, taking note of their size for later. Then using the project tool, I'll select all of the bodies and then choose the XY construction plane to project the shapes onto. This creates a perfect sketch of my sides, which I can then export as either a DXF or an SVG to use as a template in Affinity. Now it's just a matter of exporting my sketches out and the post-it note box out as a 3MF file. That way I can go create my side panels over in Affinity Designer, which will be the next step. So I'm over here in Affinity and what I'm showing you is the template I've created using the sketches. I didn't record creating the design, but basically what I did was import the sketch to a new file. Then I placed the patterns I wanted into the shapes using the sketch as a clipping mask. I also take note of the size of the design in millimeters here as well, so I know what size to put into Bamboo Studio. But now that this is done, I'll export it as a transparent PNG and head over to Maker Lab to convert these to a 3D print. So we're over here in Maker Lab, and I'm going to do like I usually do and click Create from Blank. I'm going to browse and I'm going to pull up my post-it note design and I usually leave everything set but you can always adjust the image if you need to and click confirm. Once it's processed I see that it came through pretty good and I click confirm again and it recognizes saying there's a total of five colors close enough sets it to four click confirm again. All right now I want to go ahead and resize this and because it always defaults to 100 in width and I know for this one, I got the measurements out of Affinity Designer and I needed it to be a width of 1.561. So we'll adjust that and zoom out. And then a couple more things to do before we send it to be exported. And that is to get the plate thickness. And I'll leave the color black for the background, but I will set the width of the back to 0.5 and the image thickness to 0.5. That way it's a total of one millimeter thick, which is what we want the piece to be for our post-it note box. That's what we designed it to be. And then it's just a matter of clicking download, 0.2 millimeter nozzle, and then selecting 3MF because that will contain all of the color information, which will then go over into Bamboo Studio so that we can print it. Now I've got it loaded over here in Bamboo Studio. And as I can see, it came in the size that I needed it to be. And then I just need to take a moment and get it set to the settings that I like to use, which is my 0.14 millimeter thickness. And I have it set so that the prime tower is disabled because that's just kind of unnecessary filament. I'll center on the plate. 
I'll also go over to my flushing volumes and change the multiplier to 0.6 so that I'm not using nearly as much filament. Click OK and then slice. So that works. It'll take me about two hours. Pretty decent ratio for filament used versus flushed. And once those are done, I will be able to pop them into the print. So I've loaded my post-it note container here to be printed and it's fairly straightforward print. Honestly, I do 0.16 optimal just to get a sort of a smoother curve and it's a fairly quick print. It's an hour and two minutes. I don't really change anything else. Between all of this, I should be able to get one printed in about three hours. So I'll send this over to be printed and I'll show you guys how it comes together. I did run into some issues where side pieces didn't quite fit in. It was off by just a little bit. But rather than trying to go back in and completely adjust the scaling for each of the side pieces, I just took my post-it note box and adjusted the scale on it and increased both the X and Y scale by one millimeter. And that was sufficient enough to allow the pieces to slip in without any issue. Sometimes you just have to adjust parts ever so slightly after design. I feel like it's never correct the first time and you're always going to end up tweaking things. Fortunately, this was a simple and easy fix. So that's my tutorial for the week. I like how these turned out. Out of curiosity, which one do you guys like most? Do you like the composition notebook one or the one with the kawaii landscape? And then if you like that landscape, which one do you like more, the pink or the white? Because I couldn't quite decide. I'm curious to see what you guys think in the comments. Also, if you have any questions or other things you would like to see, please feel free to drop me a note below. Also, if you could take a minute to hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, by all means, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. If you're interested in more things like this, here's a couple of videos that I recommend. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.